Welcome back to another episode of the North Star Takes Podcast. I'm Bailey Paulicki. He's Jacob Liberta. We're a Minnesota sports podcast, so if you're a sports fan, especially a Minnesota sports fan, please hit that subscribe button. If you're a Vikings fan, give this video a like because the schedule is out now. Uh, Liberta did a video kind of breaking down the marquee games and what he noticed um, as soon as the schedule came out, which was awesome. But today we are going to predict uh, the Vikings record based off the schedule, which we already knew the opponents and we knew whether it would be home away. But now that you see how it's laid out, uh, who you play back-to-back weeks, when your bye week is, uh, there's a London game thrown in there. So all sorts of things to factor in. So let's just let's get right down to it, Liberta. Let's start uh, with week one, Green Bay Packers at home. Uh, obviously, this happened in 2020, the pandemic year, where there was no crowd, and Aaron Rodgers just absolutely torched us at home. Um, what are your thoughts on this game? Do you see it kind of going that same way again, or do you see it playing out differently this time? Unfortunately, I feel like it's going that same way again. I know we got a new coaching staff in here, so like there shouldn't be hopefully too much carryover as far as Aaron Rodgers' successful performances against the Vikings, especially on the road here at U.S. Bank Stadium. But yeah, I just I got, I got a bad feeling about this one, just because I feel like there's too much to iron out for us, too much to come together, too much to figure out. It's just I I think the Packers too will come out with a better start week one than did last year because Rodgers will be around for all the offseason activities and yeah. everything will be pretty normal. I'll be at the, they'll be missing Devontae Adams for the first time, but I mean, they've won 13 games every year. LaFleur has been there. So like, there's a reason for that. They mm-hmm. come prepared more times than they don't like most of the time they do. So it's just, I think there's, there's too much of a proven track record there for me to pick a side that, that literally doesn't have it where it's like at best, it's like the 500 ness of Kirk and then mm-hmm. KOC coaching his first game. So I just think that the Packers are going to get it done here. Unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, this is tough for me. I I'm going to say the Vikings win this game. I think, I oh, think, uh, okay. I think it's going to be a strong Dalvin cook game. He always he seems to start the season really hot. Um, I think, you know, I think the offense mostly being the exact same and hopefully with an improved offensive line, depending how it shakes out during camp. Um, you know, I don't, I don't think that Packers defense is scary by any means. So I know they drafted a couple more defensive players in this year's draft. Um, and they've been doing that a lot lately. They've been drafting defense in the first round, really trying to build that thing up. So I'll give them credit there, but I still don't think it's quite that to that scary level yet. So um, as long as our offensive line holds up, which I think it will be improved this year, I think Kirk Cousins will be able to pass on the Packers and just week one at home, you know, the crowd's going to be crazy. Um, there is, there's probably gonna be a little bit of a rust factor for both teams, but yet you, you got to give the edge to the home team in that scenario. So then the Vikings are going to have a new and improved defense, you know, at least theoretically on paper, the defense should be better. I'm, I'm really excited about Lewis seen, honestly, all the stuff I've seen about yes. him coming out of this uh, rookie mini camp. He just, he seems like he's a great quality leader type player. So, uh, and then, you know, factor in like an Andrew Booth who could be a starting corner potentially. Like there's, there's some intriguing pieces there on the defense now. So um, I got the Vikings going one and all. Uh, they seem to play the Packers well at home too, for the most part. So yeah, I'll, I'll give them, I'll give them a week one win against the pack. All so. right. There we go. We need the optimism. <laughs> all right. Let's move on to week two, Monday night football at Philly. Uh, kind of an interesting matchup, having a Monday night football game so early in the season. I believe it's a part of a doubleheader for Monday night football, and it's actually going to be on ABC, nationally televised. So, what are your thoughts on this game? Yeah, you know, it's another one I just don't feel good about. It feels like it feels like bad juju or something, just because Philly's always a ruckus environment. Their fans are just straight up crazy, yep. and uh, on a Monday night, no less. So, uh and then the Kirk's track record on Monday Night Football is not good. His record is horrible. And, again, <clears throat> win losses on quarterbacks, it doesn't tell the whole story. But it's just, again, an- another game I just don't feel good about just because uh, I guess maybe I'm basing that off too much of the past and maybe pessimism that isn't warranted. But still, a coaching staff st- still putting the pieces together as far as finding a winning formula for this team. So I think it'll be – I think it'll be, quite frankly, an ugly game where, like, the Philly offense isn't going to blow you away by any means. I mean, they, they got A.J. Brown now, and Devontae Smith will be in the second year getting better, but Jalen Hurts isn't going to blow you away, I don't think. So I think it'll be kind of an ugly game, but it'll come down to maybe a turnover or two that we just aren't on the right side of when we lose this one, too. Starting all with two. Yeah, I have, us, I have us losing this game as well for most of the reasons you mentioned. I mean, Kirk Cousins on Monday night, it's a, it's a road game in Philly, a ruckus environment. We never seem to play well there. 
Um, we haven't gone there too often, but the last couple of times we've been out there, I know that we haven't played well. So yeah, it's, and it's a Monday night football game, primetime television. And this is a Vikings team that hasn't been above 500 since 2019. I have them winning week one, getting above 500. And then I have them immediately getting pulled right back down to it. And, uh, depending how the schedule shakes out here, I'm guessing that's kind of what it's going to end up happening is I'm going to keep having them getting pulled back towards 500 because uh, this team is yet to prove with Kirk Cousins, except for 2019 when they had a cupcake schedule that uh, they're able to surpass that 500, you know, threshold. So I got them, I got them losing uh, week two against the Philadelphia Eagles. So yep. we'll tough, move on. Tough to, they lost. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, it's kind of a tough game. I mean, I, I wouldn't be, you know, I wouldn't be shocked if they lost that for sure. So week three at home against the Lions. Um, what are your thoughts there? Give me a dub. <laughs> Say no more. I I don't think there's much to really worry about here. At least I hope not. I think Detroit is definitely getting better. I think their roster formation as far as how they're putting this together, I think they're doing it the right way. I still think they're yeah. your way from being like a competitive team. But I, I still I just don't. I think they're too far off yet, but it's 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 slowly but surely coming along. I think everybody loves Dan Campbell, but I here at home feels ripe for a big Vikings victory. Kevin O'Connell's first in my book, so I I think that's that's all that needs to be said. Yeah, I agree with you. I mean, it's week three. I don't think that Lions team will really you know start clicking yet. Like towards the end of this last season, the Lions actually started playing decent football even though they weren't really winning a lot of games, they were playing good and staying in close games against some pretty good teams too. So um, it's a little early, I think for the lions to start gelling and, you know uh, you know, they won't have Jamison Williams most likely in week three yet. Although there's rumors he might be ready for training camp, but I don't know. I'm guessing he won't be ready to play the first couple weeks of the season. So um, I have the Vikings winning this one at home. It should just be a classic uh, noon on Sunday, Detroit lions game, take care of business. Even if it's a little ugly, uh, just get to two and one. So with that, we'll move on. Week four is in London against the New Orleans Saints, which I'm glad we don't have to play in the Superdome, honestly. I mean, granted, going to London, London kind of sucks, but at the same time, um, that's one of your road games. It's basically a neutral site game. So what are your thoughts on the Saints game in London? You know, this feels like one of those toss-up games on the schedule because I think the Saints aren't what they used to be or as of the last few years before last season, basically since the – Drew Brees era was come to an end, and they actually had some pretty good teams. I think they're stepped down from that, but they're not quite a bad team. So playing on a neutral site, I think this is feels about as even as you can get, or at least pretty mm-hmm. close to it. And I think we'll actually come out on the winning side of this, just because I think we'll have some good momentum going off the win against Detroit. And yep. yeah, it's just I think this will be be one of the Saints will wish they had it at home, like as a true home game. So uh, give me the win here. Yeah, I'm with you. I think they beat the Saints. Uh, the Saints just aren't that good. I mean, Jameis has his moments for sure, but he's by no means scary. Um, mm-hmm. They drafted Chris Olave, who's intriguing, and then they'll have Michael Thomas back, at least I think. Uh, their, their defense is decent at best. So, like, and Alvin Kamara, he was arrested this offseason, so I'm not exactly sure what his status is going to be going forward. Yeah. Um, if you are not, if you don't have to play against Alvin Kamara, that's massive. So if you get suspended or something. So I think, yeah, I think the Vikings pull this one out and I actually have them starting off three and one here, which is more, which is better than I thought, but honestly, uh, yeah, you win that Packers game and it's a pretty favorable start to the season actually. So, yeah. um, all right. Week five, Alberta, Chicago bears at home. Yeah. I, let's just keep the skull train going. I mean, uh, we're taking another W here. I think this will be another one of those sloppy ones, but we're at home, and I think we find a way just because the Bears, I think, are going to be a bad team this year, and momentum is high. We're coming off back-to-back wins. Let's make it three in a row coming home, and I think Fields will still be kind of finding his footing, and albeit in a terrible offense on paper that the Bears will have this year. Yes. So I don't know how much he'll really find and what that peak looks like just for this season. So I think there's just – we won't have to do too much to win this one and. Uh, thankfully so coming home from a long road trip from London. So I think we'll find a way. Yeah. It is interesting that they don't have the post London bye week this year. I I heard Kevin O'Connell mention that they asked the league if, uh, if they could not have that bye so early this season. Mm -hmm. I don't know if the league necessarily listened to them or not, but uh, they got the bye pushed to week seven, but anyways, 
Bears at home, I agree. I think the Bears are going to be horrendous this year. I think that's their goal, just the way that uh, Ryan Poles went in there and stripped everything down. Justin Fields, I feel so bad for that guy because I feel like he's mm. not going to develop at this point. Like he's he's almost being set up to fail. Um, so yeah, at home against the Bears, it's a noon game. It's not a prime time game. Give me that win all day. That defense isn't what it used to be either. Yes. So uh, yeah, easy easy favorable matchup for the Vikings. I actually have them at four and one here, so I don't know what's going on. But we got the <laughs> Dolphins uh, week six in Miami. What are your thoughts on this game? All right, this is where we're already looking ahead to the bye, taking a trip to Florida. I honestly can't remember the last, the last time I watched the Vikings win a game in Florida. I think it might have been Jacksonville back in, like, 2016 or something because, like, mm-hmm. I, I can't remember any other instances. So this is – I mean, even, like, dating back in Vikings history, I'd throw it back to 1998. That team won 15-1 in the regular season, and the one game they lost is out in Tampa Bay and Florida where it's just way too hot. Your players yeah. aren't used to it, and I think that will get the best of us. And – I think this will be a game, another toss-up game, I would say, kind of like that Saints one where we're just on the wrong end of it now because I think the Dolphins are a borderline playoff team. And I think with new coach, they'll have some new energy with McDaniel there, and maybe he'll get more out of Tua than anybody thinks they could get at this point. So yeah. I, I'm chalking this up as, as a loss just because, again, the way I started this and how I think it's going to go is just looking at the bye too soon because we got that coming up in week seven. Yeah, I, I'm with you. I think this is just going to be one of those fluky, weird games. Uh, an AFC team on the road, you never really yeah. know how that's going to go. Exactly. So, uh, yeah, like you said, it's a team we don't play often, and we seem to struggle in Florida, which, mm-hmm. I mean, you know, it's hot down there, especially this is a mid-October game. It's still going to be hot down there. So, yeah, I got them losing this one, looking ahead to the bye. So I actually have them sitting at 4-2 and two going into the bye. What do you have them out at? What do you have them at right now? I got them at an even three and three going to the bye. Very Kirk Cousins esque. Yes, par for the par for the course. So we got the bye week seven coming out of the bye. Now we got week eight Arizona Cardinals at home. What are your thoughts there? I think KOC seems like the kind of guy that could put together a good game plan when given time like that. I think he'll have a nice opportunity there week seven to make some adjustments as far as what this team needs down the stretch of the season. Albeit that still. And we haven't only played six games to that point, but a great time to reset and kind of evaluate this first handful of games as the head coach. And I think given that chance, he's he's going to take care of a team he's pretty familiar with in Arizona that he's played a number of times over the last couple of years. So I think we get it done here, albeit it's a, it's a tougher one going against a pretty explosive offense. I think we got something – really left unresolved for Pappy too in a mm-hmm. Pappy revenge game. We should have won that one last year and we didn't, but now I think we get him back on, on home turf. Uh DeAndre Hopkins was suspended for PEDs. Do you know how many games he got? I, I think it was six games. Yeah, so we're gonna have to yeah. face him and he'll be fresh. Yeah. Um That's yeah that one. that worries me. I do see us losing this game at home. Um I agree with you. <clears throat> it's intriguing O'Connell getting the buy you know coming out of the bye because historically Zimmer teams coming out of the bye uh, tended to struggle and I don't know I, just, I still think Arizona is gonna be a really good team although I think Cliff Kingsbury is a horrible coach and he's completely bungled that situation they could be so much better than what they are but um, that offense is hard to keep up with and I think it definitely can expose our defense with Kyler Murray running around so uh, and this I think is another one where you know it's a it's a game against a good team and you know it's a team you can beat but will you beat them and I think the Vikings just come up short. So I have them losing to the Cardinals here. Okay. Um, you got to lose like a win. All right. Yeah. So we differ on that one. But uh, week nine at Washington Commanders. Mm, this one is very tasty. I know it's been a long time since he's been there. So it's kind of worn off a little bit. But the Kirk Cousins revenge game back in Washington, D.C. I think yeah. that's, that's, that's kind of juicy. And I think. Kirk balls out. I think at least maybe not quite like super high power, 300 yards, four touchdowns, but enough to win the game. And I think uh, stick it to some of those people there. I know Kirk isn't the most like, I don't know, high personality kind of guy, but yeah. I think I think there's sometimes when if he feels like everybody's against him, he can play his best ball. Because the moment I always think of when he's got his back against the wall and everybody's basically out on him, it's like – a couple years ago, it was in 2019. It was after that disastrous loss on the road in Chicago. We started two and two. Yep. Diggs is missing practice that week, and then we came back out against the Giants. 
later and he was phenomenal so Mm -hmm. and then the rest of the month really had that Kirktober so right I feel like this is going to be one of those games where I think he gets it done for so I think everybody pretty pretty excited about that and that's going to bring us to five and three all right yeah I got him winning this game as well I think Washington's kind of I think they're going to be bad again I know they traded for Carson Wentz but I mean you can't trust him to stay healthy and even when he's been healthy he hasn't played well so Mm -hmm. um yeah, that team, they just they seem to keep making questionable decisions. They have horrible ownership. I like Ron Rivera as a coach, but uh yeah, the Vikings are the far superior team in my mind. And on paper, they absolutely win this matchup. So I got them beating the Washington football team. And I also have them at five and three. So um interesting. All right, but now we got Buffalo Bills week 10 on the road. Uh, I'm not feeling so good about this one. How about you? <laughs> nah, this is the most slam dunk loss of the season. I, I don't think there's much doubt here. This team could legitimately win the Super Bowl right now. I think mm-hmm. Josh Allen is going to be an MVP candidate every single season for the foreseeable future. And I think he's just – he's a unicorn, fantastic quarterback. I think yep. he's up there with Mahomes as far as the two best quarterbacks in the league. So I am in a <laughs> sloppy – kind of weather game that will probably happen that day out in Buffalo. I I don't think we stand a chance against that high power of a team, both offensively and defensively. So I think this this one's an L and in a resounding way. Yeah, I think this is gonna be one of those losses because it'll drop us to five and four. There's gonna be a lot of people talking about oh you know this Vikings team once again they can't, you know, you know, they're still straggling around five hundred. Yep. Uh you know, Kirk Cousins can't beat these good teams on the road. There's going to be all sorts of talk about how the Vikings aren't for real. Uh, the Packers are going to be ahead of them in the division at this point. So, yeah, I mean, this is, like you said, the most slam dunk loss on the schedule. And I don't think there's any two ways about it. Buffalo is one of the best teams, if not the best team in the NFL. So uh, it's going to be hard to go into their place and beat them. So I, I agree. That's definitely a loss. But then we follow it up with the Dallas Cowboys at home week 11. I feel like third time's a charm here. Now I think we've played them the last two years at home, Watch, lost each of those games in bad circumstances, really, because we 2020, they rolled on Andy Dalton out there. Dak was hurt for, hurt for a while by that point, and Dallas was not playing well, and they found a way to beat us. And again, last year they started Cooper Rush and lost that game too right at the end. So third time's a charm. We finally get it done. We beat America's team, and – this is a nice get right game for us in the early afternoon on Sunday after what I think will be an ugly loss in Buffalo the week before. I have this one as a loss. I think, Ooh, okay. yeah, I, I don't feel good about it because I'm never threatened by the Dallas Cowboys, but we mm-hmm. have struggled against them the last couple of years. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, just that prototype of quarterback, Dak Prescott, Kyler Murray, those guys make me worried sure. um, with the way our defense is because we have an older aging defense, even though we brought in some younger pieces now. Um yeah, I just it's it's a three twenty five time slot. That's the prime Dallas Cowboys time slot, albeit it's a home game. But oh, it's a three twenty five game. Okay. Yeah, it's a three twenty five. Yeah. So, um, right. but yeah, I just I worry about this one. I think it's a loss, and uh, that that brings the Vikings back to five hundred for me. So, all right, all right. Week twelve, Thanksgiving night, New England Patriots at home. Yeah, I think this is most kind of fun game to look at on the schedule among all these games we're talking through. And it's the first time the Vikings ever hosted a Thanksgiving Day game, at least the Thanksgiving primetime night game. Yeah. And against the Patriots, no less. Uh, as I mentioned in the last video, it was just the Patriots are one of the iconic franchises of the league after these last 20 years and the dynasty they built and Tom Brady and whatnot. So, and obviously they still got Bill Belichick, and that's why I think we're going to lose this one. I think we got the first-year head coach with – KOC, Kirk, another primetime game. Don't feel great about it. I think the Patriots find a way to just grind it out. It might not be pretty, but I think they, they just do it just because I I don't I don't know. I, I it's it's hard. It just goes back to the theme. It's like an overall theme when you pick these primetime games that pick us to win. It's like I, I feel like I gotta be proven differently with this new regime. For sure. Yeah. The Vikings always seem to soil themselves when it's a primetime game. Yeah. Uh, even going back before Kirk Cousins, too, like sure. they just historically have not played well in prime time. So, mm-hmm. but I do have them winning this game. I'm not a big believer in the Patriots. You know, Mac Jones had a decent season last year, but he kind of towards the end of the season he really trailed off. So I think the book is out on him. 
Uh, obviously, the Patriots don't have like any phenomenal playmakers that you really need to worry about. So really, as long as our offense comes in and does their job and limits turnovers, I think we're going to be just fine in this game because the defense will be able to hold New England under, you know, 24 points or something. So that is true. Um, I have them winning this game, bouncing back, getting to six and five. And then the following week, week 13, New York Jets come to town. And I feel like that might be one of the most gimme wins on the schedule. Yeah, it better be. I think the Jets are getting better. They've had some good drafts the last couple of years, and it's kind of like Detroit where the roster is definitely evolving, but it's just still another year away. Yep. And I'm not a big believer in Zach Wilson. And, yeah, it's just the Jets. They they haven't won more than five games in a handful of years. So this this better be this better be a win, especially when we got extra time to prepare for them after that Thanksgiving Day game. Yeah. It's – yeah, it should, it should be a slam dunk. Like you said, it's got to be one of those ones we have to chalk up as a W before anything even takes place, really. Right. I mean, it's hard to know, like, the development of Zach Wilson and how some of these, you know, other younger players on their roster are going to develop as well. But, I mean, just the way it looks right now, this, is, this should be the easiest home game of the season for the Vikings. Yes. Maybe this or the Lions. I guess you could probably flip a coin. But, mm-hmm. um yeah, I got I got the Vikings beating the Jets easily in this one, and then we move on to play the Lions. We get the Jets and Lions back to back weeks. However, in Week 14, we are at Detroit. I think it's a win too. I know I've said some good things about Dan Campbell, and they did take one from us last year, but I think that took a lot of fluky circumstances from us. Just not, I don't know, not thinking straight. I guess I mm-hmm. I think that that loss last year in Detroit came, I think, the week after we lost in San Francisco, and that felt like the turning point of the season. And I think that's when everybody started to give up on Zimmer. So yep. I I think this time we, we get it right and we find a way. I think this is one of those games where our offense goes off in a dome environment here after a nice nice win against the Jets the week before. I think they do yep. it again against the Lions. Yeah, I think this is a win as well. The Lions at this point are either going to be playing inspired football they're going to be so bad that they're talking about running Dan Campbell out of town. So uh, we're I, trying to tank for the pick for, to get like Bryce Young or CJ Stroud. Right, exactly. Which that's something to keep in mind too when it comes to some of these picks. Like you got the Giants coming up here at the end of the season as well. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I got the I got them beating the Lions this game, and I actually have them at eight and five at this point. So that's uh, that's pretty crazy. <laughs> yeah, as do I. All right, week fifteen, Indianapolis Colts at home. And for some reason, this game does not have a time scheduled yet. Um, it's the week before Christmas. I don't know if they start Saturday football at that point. I know NFL Network does that. I think they do. If I'm not so that's, prob- that's probably why it's a TBD and not like a Sunday game. So mm-hmm. uh, what are your thoughts on Matt Ryan and the Colts coming to town? Yeah, I think the Colts will be better this year. Matt Ryan is very steady, <laughs> unlike Carson Wentz. And he's also very durable. He's always you, – you can count on him to be out there. And he's going to be a solid quarterback, especially behind a good offensive line that Indy typically has. And some receivers that are definitely getting better with, for instance, uh, Michael Pittman. So their defense also is very solid. They got Buckner. They got Leonard. I mean, they got some playmakers. So I honestly think this is a loss. I also can't remember the last time we won against the Colts either. So it just yeah. feels like one of those games too. So I'm chalking this one up as an L and a December L because – that's not another one of those things goes back to like the Vikings record in December feels like the last handful of years. It's just not. Yeah. Good. That's a good point. And a great point about us not beating the Colts. Obviously uh, a couple of years ago against Phillip rivers, that game was a complete disaster. I think that was yeah. week two of that season and the COVID yep. year. Yep. Um, you go back a few years before that Adrian Peterson comes back. Like he rushed his injury, comes back in like week 16 Vikings are pushing right. for a playoff spot and, and they smoked. completely, uh, soil themselves and you know eliminate themselves from the playoffs. And I even remember going back to like 2012, Christian Ponder. Andrew, Andrew Luck's rookie year. Yes, Christian Ponder yeah. uh, was horrible against the Indianapolis Colts. So uh, you're right. We do tend to struggle against them. I have this as a loss as well. Um, mm-hmm. I think the Colts are a playoff team in the AFC as long as Matt Ryan stays healthy because if he's healthy, he's going to be good, and he's got some guys there that he can throw to. So, yeah. uh, it's a better situation than Atlanta. For sure, and he's better quarterback than Carson Wentz. So, and Carson Wentz almost got them to the playoffs. So, exactly, they were literally a, a win away from a win away in the last week of the season against a one-win Jaguars team. Exactly, yeah, and Carson Wentz completely train wrecked that game. So, um, yeah, moving on to the San Francisco Giants here. We're coming down to the home stretch of the season. For yeah, the, the New York or, Giants. There. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What did I say? San Francisco. <laughs> got go. baseball. Got baseball <laughs> on the mind. Uh, yeah, New York Giants at home. Uh, 
last home game of the season for the Vikings. What do you think? What are your thoughts? It's kind of like when we play the other New York team at home. I feel like you have to chalk this one up as a W. Otherwise, what are we doing here? The, the Giants are not good. They have also a first-year head coach at Brian Dable, and I think they'll probably start going in the right direction now because they also got, the, got that Joe Shane in the in the front office coming from the yeah. old system where they've obviously put together a serious contender. So I think they'll get better over time. But, again, I think they're this is going to be early in their rebuild process. So – uh, who knows who's going to be rolling out there at quarterback either by that point? Daniel Jones. I mean, who knows? So I think this has got to be a W and good for Vikings fans on Christmas Eve with this one. Yeah, that's true. It's a Christmas Eve game. I think this is a dub as well. Yeah. You know, along with the along with the Jets and Lions, I think the Giants could be one of the worst teams in the NFL as well. You throw yeah. Houston in there, those are probably the four worst teams in the NFL this season. So um yeah, it's good. They're going to be a mess, uh, especially at this point. I mean, it'll, it'll be late in the season. They're probably giving up on Daniel Jones, like you mentioned. He might not even be playing. Yeah. So, yeah, this should be a win. Last home game of the season, finish strong. And uh, then you look ahead to the Packers and Bears. But, yeah, let's go Let's go next to the Packers game, week 17, uh, just like last year in Green Bay, although this isn't a Sunday night game, thankfully. Uh, thoughts on this game? I can't see this one as a – as a W two, I think this is an L because I gotta, I gotta just assume it's gonna happen until proven otherwise. Because I don't, I think the one win we have with Kirk at Lambeau is the one in 2020 where we came came all fire and out of the box yes. because Dalvin basically carried us the whole game. He had like four touchdowns over 200 yards, so it took like this incredible performance to basically overcome the beast on the road. Right. And as none of those things, you go to the Packers like. How many home games they've lost with LaFleur is just ridiculous. I think they've only lost in, I think, three seasons with them, maybe four games, something yeah. like that. Uh, playoffs, different story. But as far as the regular season goes, they, they almost never lose. So I cold weather game like this, Kirk does not play well. And, again, this is a, this is a pretty big-time situation for our first-year head coach where LaFleur has been there, done that, and yeah. it's Rodgers against us. That's not, I, I don't feel it. So, unfortunately, I think we go 0-2 against the Packers this year. Yeah, I have them losing this game as well. Um, it's just it's a tough task, you know, at Lambeau when it's cold. First year head coach, like you mentioned, and this game will probably have some, you know, uh, the division might be on the line this game. Like I, I don't think Maybe. the Packers will win thirteen games, although I think that every year and they always win thirteen yeah. games. So, exactly. um, you know, I got them hanging around us here, but yeah, yeah I got us losing this game. It's just I, I still think Green Bay is going to be too good. As long as they have Aaron Rodgers, until I see otherwise, I have no faith that the Vikings can win this division as exactly. long as Aaron Rodgers is healthy and playing for the Packers. Exactly. So, yeah, I got us losing this game. And now this puts us in the in a classic predicament because I got the Vikings at 9-7. and seven, Me too. And we are at Week 18 at Chicago. We always struggle at Chicago. Luckily, this won't be a primetime game. There won't be any Monday night football last week of the season. Oh, there, um, there could be, though. We could get flexed into it, but we probably won't because they just started that this last year where they put a game on Monday night. Oh, right that's right. Yeah, yeah, you're right about that. But with the Bears being as bad as they are, I would hope they wouldn't flex that game. Let's hope that. So hopefully this is a noon game at Chicago or something. But anyways, it doesn't it doesn't seem to matter what time it is that we play in Chicago because that yeah. Diggs, the, when you mentioned Diggs going AWOL at practice, I believe that's that was a noon game. That was a noon game in Chicago. So. Yeah. This is tough because it could be the classic Vikings melting down at Soldier Field, finishing nine and eight, and maybe getting the seven seed. Yep. Or they could win this game uh, because Chicago's terrible and finish ten and seven, and you know be one of the you know maybe be a five or six seed in the wild card race instead of a seven or out of the playoffs. So, what are your thoughts on this game? For what it's worth, we've won in Chicago the last two seasons, but Chicago has also been an awful team. So. And I think they will be continue to be bad this year as they're rebuilding this thing because their roster talent ever since winning the division 2018 has gone dramatically down. Now they got to build it back up. First year coach, first year GM, just like us. I think they'll have virtually nothing to play for other than improving their draft pick, quite frankly. So yeah. it kind of depends how hard they're really tanking because if they are, then we win. But if not, like if they bring some sort of good effort, I don't think we win this game. So I, I, truthfully, I'm, I'm going to chalk this one up as an L2 just because wow. – I don't I don't feel good about it. I think we'll be down on our on our laurels, uh really after losing that game in Green Bay the week prior. And it just doesn't feel good like trying to clinch a playoff spot by playing the Bears at Soldier Field in a cold and cold weather environment yet again. Yeah. Uh, 
squeak in. So I think we're going to be at a firm nine and eight. You know, Kirk and this 500 record will just continue to live on, and we'll really see what it comes down to it with other teams in the standings if that's good enough for a playoff spot or not. Yeah, I, I actually have us winning this game. I'm, I'm okay. kind of giving the Vikings the benefit of the doubt. I just right. I really think Chicago is going to be bad. I mean, they're not going to be three wins. I mean, they could be three wins bad, I guess, but maybe like five or six wins bad. And, uh, yeah, I just I have a tough time. They'll be checked out at this point. They'll be ready to hit the links. So, uh, yeah, I got I got a speed in the Bears. We finished 10 and 7. That's probably good enough for five or six seed in the NFC. Granted, mm-hmm. you probably lose in the wild card round because, you know, these other teams, the Rams, the Packers, the Bucks. Yeah. Um, Get a really tough know, matchup right away. Yeah. The same old characters from the last couple of years. So, um, but yeah, 10 and 7, I guess it's an improvement based on what the last couple seasons have been. And it's not exactly good enough to convince you that Kirk Cousins needs to be extended again. So maybe you can still go quarterback hunting in the following draft. Mm -hmm. Um, There's all sorts of things at play here. But what I've noticed is, like, I picked us losing to Dallas. That could easily be a win, I think. Um, The Colts game, the Colts are a good team, but, like, that could be a win, too. It's home game. Arizona, uh, I think you had them winning the Arizona game, right? I I had them winning that one, yeah. Yeah, I picked them to lose that game. So, like, there's, there's different scenarios here. The Dolphins, like, they could implode because Tua's just not that good. Like, there's so many different scenarios that could play out here that the Vikings could have a much better record. But at the same time, we could have bad injury luck. Uh, Kirk Cousins could just, you know, have a horrid stretch throughout the middle of the season or something, and that could tank some games where we really should win too. So um, th- that's usually how they end up playing out to be about 500 because they're just so wildly inconsistent based on the talent they're playing. Yeah, exactly. This feels like another season that'll definitely have its ups and downs. And naturally, with the first year head coach kind of uh, learning the ropes and figuring out what works and what doesn't, I think that's what's going to pull us towards that for better or worse. And yep. if they do get to the 10 wins, like you said, then I'll be pretty happy with that. I think that's a pretty huge success for a uh, coach in his first season. And we'll go from there. But yeah, I just think it's it's hard to pick the Vikings win any more than that until proven yeah. otherwise because like you said, besides the one year in twenty nineteen when we went ten and six with Kirk, we just we haven't even come close to being like a dominant team in the in the NFC. So it's just I will I'll be gladly proven wrong if they go out and win a bunch of games like great. I'll I'll admit that was wrong. But it's just yeah. it, until that happens, I just I can't get too high. Yeah, and I'm with you. Like I you know I was only a game above you I need to be. I need to see it to believe it too, because this team's just been the same team for the last, you know, several years. But maybe the coaching change helps. Maybe you know some of these guys they drafted can come in and make an immediate impact, especially mm-hmm. defensively. Yeah. So, yeah, it'll be interesting to see how it plays out. Um, I'm kind of excited for OTAs just to see the team back in town again, yeah. um, and then before you know it, training camp will be here too. So, yeah. football season's not that far away. Absolutely. And I can't wait to see, like you mentioned OTAs, who we're going to put in our first team, both offensively and defensively. I think yeah. offensively, it, it feels pretty set as far as what we're doing outside of, I think, the right guard position. I, I want to know who feels like the front runner there. I think yes. Maybe our envisioning Chris Reed is like the backup center, what it might be by the time we get there. And then mm-hmm. defensively, I think there's all sorts of intrigue there as far as who's going to play, who's not, what kind of looks we're going to have. And I, I, I can't wait. Absolutely, man. Couldn't have said it better myself, but this is, it's been a long episode, so we should probably wrap it up here. But Yeah, uh, for sure. For sure. <laughs> that, that will do it for this edition of the North Star Takes podcast. Like I mentioned earlier, please give a like on this video and hit the subscribe button as well. Feel free to follow us on both Twitter and Instagram and let us know your thoughts in the comment section below. How do you see the schedule playing out? Uh, what do you think the tough games are? Uh, what do you think the easy games are? And give us your predictions as well, what you think the Vikings will do this season. And until next time, thanks for watching.